Hi class, it's Miss Rice, and today I know it's Monday, so and it's also Thanksgiving week, so I got my Thanksgiving book, and it's not a turkey, but my chicken Henry. All right, so today I thought <laughs> today I thought I would read a book to you about home since you guys will be home or you have family coming in. So it's called A Piece of Home by Jerry Watts, illustrated by Huan Yum. So let's get into this story, you guys. I also have an activity for you to do as well. Um, I know we're, it's a short week, just Monday and Tuesday, but I thought we could read a little bit and just have fun, you know? All right, A Piece of Home. All right. In Korea, my grandmother was a wise and wonderful teacher. When students bowed, she held her shoulders erect, but her eyes sparkled. See her right there? Aww. Even at home, my grandmother could find the extraordinary held within the ordinary. Like how she coaxed her Manungawa shrubs to blossom into tansham flowers, revealing their bright red centers. Get them helping right there. gonna happen. In Korea, I was ordinary. A regular boy playing and laughing and bossing my little sister, Sarah. I was not extraordinary, not different. I was just me, like so many others. In Korea, my father, who always did the right thing, who always did what was expected, surprised us all. He accepted a position at a law school in West Virginia. Who would expect West Virginia? He laughed, and so did my mother. I did not. He's very unhappy right there. Oh, poor little boy. All right. In swift movements and rapid time, I found my world packed into three boxes and one suitcase. Created, nailed, and mailed to a house I had never seen. True story, I moved from Ohio to Virginia and we almost lived in a house that was yellow. <laughs> and it was definitely different. Not even from Korea, but it was a different world for me. Less cornfields. All right. In West Virginia, my grandmother stays at home and she does not hold her shoulders erect and her eyes don't gleam, not at all. In West Virginia, I am not ordinary. I am different. My eyes are not big and round like everyone else's, and my hair does not tumble into thick curls or make a golden halo around my head. My new classmates smile and talk, but it is a sharp noise. Their names sit like stones on my tongue. Steve and Tom. Here there are mountains like in Korea, but the sky seems smaller and darker. I miss the lights of our city. The dark here is so black at night I touch my eyes to make sure they're open. But when the pale moon is full and round, it looks like my face. And a little like the face of the woman who is now my teacher. Warm at night. My teacher is nice. She tries to help. She speaks slowly as if I'm stupid. Lips snapping over my sound my mouth will not make. Can you say B-O-O-K? I try to say I don't want to be here. She nods a lot and smiles, but she knows that I do not understand. And I know she does not understand. It's hard when you don't understand. Sayra also does not understand. Recess is over. Oh, she got upset. Oh, poor Sayra. She bites and kicks and even spits on the teacher. My grandmother cries and tries to tell the teacher she is sorry. 
Then my father talks to the school in his flawless English. It is decided that my grandmother will go to school with my sister to give her a bit of ordinary. She's having a hard time adjusting, he's saying on the phone. But I have no help. I wish I were little enough or brave enough to bite and kick and spit. Hmm. Days become weeks and weeks become months. I learn bathroom and please. I'm surprised that I can form words that make their meaning clear, though they still feel like stones heavy in my mouth. See, he's trying to have pizza. Sometimes that's hard for people to say. They work, they work though. Play with me like in Korea, pass it back like in Korea. Look, let's throw it at the girls. Okay, look, he's getting along with his classmates. Aww. Grandmother is learning too, along with Sayroth. At dinner, she tells us about the other children in Sayroth's class and about their young teacher, newly engaged, who helps my mother with English at nap time. And my grandmother, with halting words, gives her advice. <clears throat> One day, Steve says, He young, he John, I guess that word. He young, come over. My first visit to a friend in his yard, I discover a red centered blossom. Mahungawa, I say. The Rose of Sharon, Sharon Steve says. It's Mahunga in Korea, I say. It's the Rose of Sharon here, Steve says. See, they have two different things to call this flower, but still the same flower. When I leave, Steve's mother gives me Mahunga blossoms and tender shoot to take home. A piece of heaven, grandmother says. A piece of home. Oh, it's so cute. I love that. My grandmother plants the shoot, and at the end of the summer, she takes one of the Mahungawa blossoms and sews it into the wedding dress of her friend, like our family does in Korea. And I say, Steve, come over. Light like a bubble on my tongue, and that is ordinary in our new home. Oh, he's playing soccer with them. Aww. The end. So I will have an activity for you guys um, uh, to do on my Google Classroom. And I wanted to make you guys draw a little piece of your home uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, so check that out in my Google Classroom. Um, and then I'll have one more story to read tomorrow and then we'll be off. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day.